to talk about, uh, we're going to go mainly today, we're just going to go over the Supreme Court. And there are big rulings for the end of June um, and all the craziness going on with that. So we'll uh, we'll talk about that, but I want to dive right in. So the first case we wanted to talk about was um, they had the ruling on the the LGBTQ wedding design, uh, web design lady, right? So just to give you sort of the basics. So this woman in Colorado, so in Colorado, it's, you know, you can't, you can't deny somebody based on their their, gen, their gender or their sexual orientation or skin color, right? <laughs> For service, right? It's the same, same reason we don't have segregated restaurants anymore, right? Uh, this was decided years ago that, that uh, sexual orientation was also a protected class under that ruling. And so she did what's kind of a weird thing where it's, she filed saying, well, I do web design for weddings, right? And there was this guy, Stuart, and his uh, fiance, Mike, and they wanted me to do a, a wedding website for them. And I'm refusing and I'm challenging the law, right? So we're going to get like a little bit. This is, this is just sort of the case. She won this in the Supreme Court, so she doesn't have to under religious freedom, under uh, First Amendment rights, but this was... Sort of the basis of what was going on. Now at 1030, the Supreme Court deals a devastating blow to LGBTQ protections. Ruling businesses can refuse service to same-sex customers in some cases. Now the justices ruled in favor of a Christian web designer in Colorado who refused to create a website based on her religious beliefs and First Amendment rights. John Fidolio live in our news center with a look at what the ruling means and its far-reaching implications. John. Sharon Micah, that web designer says she's an evangelical Christian who doesn't believe in gay marriage and wants to refuse her services to LGBTQ couples. She argued before the court that she was protected by her First Amendment rights of free speech and expression. The Supreme Court agreed. Now critics worry the ruling will invite more discrimination against LGBTQ people. And it wasn't just that in the criticism, um, in the dissenting opinion. They also pointed out, well, I mean, if, if you can do that for a religious exemption, I could start a religion where I don't believe white people should be allowed out in public. And now if one of them comes into my store, I could say, well, this is against my religion. You're violating my freedom of speech rights for me to have to, to serve you. Right? Or do any work for you. So, I mean, it, it just opens up a huge can of worms, which which is hard to put back in the box. Uh, yeah. God, this, is, this is so interesting <clears throat> to me because I've got, I've got thoughts and feelings that go in different directions. So for our viewers, I don't know if this has ever come up in an episode. I really don't remember. I'm bisexual. I'm a part of, of the gay community. And this, I have multiple feelings in like kind of two different directions. I can't speak for everybody. I only speak for myself, but I don't particularly want to give my money to a business person that, that is against serving me sure. um, because of my sexual orientation. I don't, I vote with my dollar and I don't want to vote with my dollar in favor of their small business. Sure. Um, so, so I automatically don't want to give my business to somebody who really doesn't want to be serving me simultaneously I, I really really feel like it's dangerous and super scary that that you just said that it's okay right. law to deny service to somebody on that basis in what is a protected designation or supposed to be i guess maybe it's not so protected sure sure um, but those are feelings in two different ways. Why you want to vote with your dollar? The fact that somebody can just like literally decide. So, so what is there going to be a grocery store now that like if yeah. I'm known as bisexual, I can't like suddenly shop at this grocery store because yeah. the person who owns this little grocery market doesn't like gay people? Yeah. Well, I mean, they could do that. We could, but gay is not allowed in Hobby Lobby, <clears throat> right? That was the Hobby Lobby right, case. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, but it, it doesn't. It's not just that. It's the. I think it's odd to coming off of uh, 
the other big case was Bostock versus Clayton in 2020. And what that was, was the guy Bostock um, got fired for being gay from his job. And that was legal in the state he lived in. It was, there was no federal protection for that. And it wasn't until 2020 that the Supreme Court said in a 6-3 rule, like, well, actually, no, you can't fire somebody because they're gay or evict somebody because they're gay. But it was still legal in this country, federally, to do that up until 2020, which is three years ago. So the fact that, like, I, 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 I sort of get where you have feelings on this because it's like, what, what, how would you feel if your rights were up for a ruling by the Supreme Court? Right? And that's kind well, of... Well, my rights keep being up for rulings on the Supreme Court. They, they are dictating, you know, my reproductive rights, uh, whether people can give me service. So apparently I've got to carry whatever babies the Supreme Court has decided I need to carry. And um, people don't have to serve me because I'm a bisexual female. Yeah. And, Oh, what else? What else do you feel like taking from me? Yeah, I know, but it, but that's where it kind of goes. What's funny about this case is she technically sort of had standing, but this is what's so funny about it. Um, but let me just okay, let me. Duncan, let's pause here. Sure. Standing. Oh, standing. When you say she has standing. Oh, she has a right to bring the. Like elevator version. Again. She has the right to bring the lawsuit. She can show harm. Right. standing before your case can even get seen. Right. It can be thrown up before it's ever seen if they say you don't even have a right to bring this to our attention. Right. Basically. Right. Now, on a thing, something, if there's a thing called preemptive standing where like if I want to challenge an existing law because I want to be able to break that law, I can then bring a case like that. And that's kind of what, uh, sort of how they spun this here. Uh, though it doesn't really make sense why they would, they, they did. But this is what's funny. The case was based on, she claimed this guy and his fiance asked her to make a wedding website. Why don't I let the news tell you more about this? <laughs> so this is Democracy Now! Here we go. Now, democracynow.org, the War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. Today, the Supreme Court issues two more decisions, including one brought by a Colorado wedding website designer who wants to be allowed to refuse service to same-sex couples. Lori Smith filed a lawsuit with help from the right-wing Alliance Defending Freedom as part of the group's ongoing attacks on the rights of LGBTQIA people. Smith said a Colorado law that bars businesses from refusing to sell a product to gay couples is a violation of her right to free speech as someone who opposes same-sex marriage. But new reporting shows Smith never once made a wedding website, and a key document in the case may be fake. For more, we're joined by Melissa Jira Grant, staff writer. Oh, yeah. She doesn't even have a wedding website business. She's never made one. stupider. So this whole thing is we're ruling on a hypothetical of what something might happen. You can sort you can technically do that with a preemptive law, but typically you do that before the law is put in place. You don't do that after the law has been in place for years and years and years. Because we have the data on how that law has actually affected people. And it hasn't in any negative way. Right? So here's the whole deal. So this is, so the whole sham website customer, right? So it turns out they tracked this guy, Stuart, down. Let me get rid of this ad here. Look at her looking all contemplative. They tracked him down. He doesn't know who she is. He's never, he was, he, he says here, uh, I wouldn't want anybody to make me a wedding website. The man identified only as Stuart, right? This is the guy. I'm married. I have a child. He's married to a woman, too. He's straight. I'm not really sure where that came from, but somebody's using false information in a Supreme Court filing document. 
So the guy that she said was the, the that she's complaining against never even never asked for it. A website. So this whole thing was she's a basically a Republican plant. They made the whole thing up just so they could get it to the Supreme Court. <clears throat> because they knew with a conservative Supreme Court they could win it. So the whole case was fake going in. And the Supreme Court bought it. So this gives me really very, very little faith. And it's not even just because I'm a liberal leaning person, but like, but our own Supreme Court can get faked out that easily. No, no, no. I well, know that. No, they're just making shit up at this point. That's the point. They don't care. They're just making stuff up that, because they know they can. They have a 6-3 majority. We don't actually have to justify why we're doing shit. That's the problem. That's why when people say the Supreme Court's illegitimate or they're criticizing the Supreme Court, you've got Clarence I mean, Thomas. They feel illegitimate. Yeah. I, I don't blame people for saying that. It feels that way for sure. you got Clarence Thomas taking free vacations, Alito taking free vacations, Thomas's wife taking money from conservative PACs. You know, they're hearing cases from these guys they're taking money from. Who else got tagged? Uh, John Roberts' wife took money, and he's the, you know, he's the, the chief justice. And now they're saying, yeah, we don't have to justify anything. We can just, we're just untouchable, which they kind of are. Then you kind of have to sit there and go, what's the point? Because right now they're making legislation. They're not... They're supposed to just be interpreting the law. This is actually making legislation. Right. right. They're not interpreting legislation. So, yeah. So that's, I think that's, you know, just goes to show you, I mean, for the gay community, you took two steps forward in 2020 and there's another step back. You know, I, it can always get worse, but you know the long arc, the long arc of history. Sorry, always leans left, but the bottom line is, they can knock it back every once in a while. And you're gonna make up all that progress again. So here's another one. <laughs>